So when I started in the off-road world, I had a vehicle on 33 inch tall tires and I thought I was hot stuff until a few years later, someone pulled up next to me with 35s and I was like, wow, what is this person doing? And now we are standing next to a factory equipped vehicle on 37s, 37s. That's right. Unreal. And I'm with Ari, the engineering lead behind the Ford Bronco Raptor. Yeah, Ari Gruneveld, Chief Program Engineer on Bronco Raptor within Ford Performance. Yeah, it's, it's glad, to be, glad to be talking to you. This is awesome. So um, let's start off with the tires that you talked about. <laughs> yes. So we, we decided to make 37 inch tire standard on this Raptor. So a standard offering based on the fact that we're, we have that Ultra 4 inspiration. So going over rocks and going high speed in the desert we found that this really facilitates both very well. Interesting. So desert running, you, you're still getting over obstacles as well as obstacles when you're doing extreme rock crawling, which this vehicle is very capable of doing. So what's under the hood? All right, so we have the proven three liter twin turbo EcoBoost and uh, the team between the powertrain team and Ford Performance, we have a rating of 418 horsepower and 440 foot pounds of torque. Okay. And. Uh, we did that by really reducing induction losses. So induction losses are down by 50% mm -hmm. and exhaust losses are down by about 33%. So now this motor is breathing a lot better. That also enabled us to go to a different turbo specific for the Bronco Raptor. So Ari, I've seen a three liter in other Ford products before twin turbo, like in the Explorer ST. Is that the same engine that's in the Raptor or is it different for this vehicle? So it's still a nano product, but we have a unique turbo for the Bronco Raptor. And it's based on those induction losses that we've been able to achieve, um, the, that efficiency as well as the exhaust. So that enabled us to have a turbo specific for this to optimize performance. And that's really how we overachieved on our internal target. We had a target and uh, you get a lot of Ford Performance engineers and powertrain engineers working on a product like this they want to overachieve and that's what we did. So I have to ask a question because I got a lot of questions about it. Was there ever consideration for a V8 in the Raptor? So the three liter EcoBoost that we have in this, um, in this vehicle is when you drive the vehicle as you will today and again tomorrow, you're gonna see, you're, you're essentially driving the horsepower curve. You're gonna notice that it's it's very smooth um, if you've driven a 2.7 before, which is, yeah. a ver which is a great motor and great performance. You're going to find that there's uh, different characteristics about this. So uh, really, the 3 liter we found as we looked at different alternatives was the right motor for this vehicle. Fair enough. All right, now let's kind of do a quick walk around. We'll go around this side. Sure. So the front end looks quite different than our Sasquatch Bronco, for example. Is the grill designed for more airflow? Of, yes. It's and, gotta and be. <laughs> so the grill has the, uh, this is like a signature for a, uh, a Raptor. Yep. We have the FORD. Um, part of uh, Raptor's environment is being in the uh, hot desert, right? Like we are today. Yeah. And uh, having the breathability through the grill. So wherever we could put a hole for pass through to get the airflow into the engine was uh, very important to us. So. Um, it is unique from the base program. You'll notice that when, uh, you can't notice it now, but we have different signature lights on this versus uh, base Bronco. These are both amber, so the ring and bar are amber. The uh, markers, those very familiar Raptor markers in the center of the grill, uh, those are also amber. And uh, based on the width of the vehicle, so anything over 80 inches requires those side markers. We've actually been able to incorporate that into the side mirror. This shows red facing aft and amber facing forward. That's so, super interesting. Right, okay. because the modularity of this truck, you couldn't do that on a component that customers might typically decide to uh, make changes to. Right. The modularity of the base Bronco, we've still kept intact with this vehicle. So um, as people decide to take off different components, whether it's fenders, quarters, flares, um, the mirror is generally going to stay there because it stays on the cowl. Now, we even talked, with the doors off. We talked about in the presentation how the width has been increased by nearly 10 inches, which is enormous. Yes. I mean, that's huge. And obviously a lot of that uh, from an exterior design standpoint is, is brought forth by the, the fender flares, but are the fenders different as well compared to a standard Yeah, Bronco? so fenders and quarters, we, uh, and the hood. So fenders, quarters, and hood, this is all made out of SMC. Okay. Okay. Can so, you explain what that is? Uh, sheet molding compound. Okay. So it's a uh, material that's put into a mold and uh, you end up with panels like this. So it's not a metallic um, a panel. 
it's um, it's SMC. Is it still painted or is it like a molding color? No, it's painted. Okay. It's definitely painted. Gotcha. Yes. So, um, so a little bit of uh, more detail on the track width. So what Lindsay was talking about was the overall width of the vehicle from really edge to edge. Okay. The track width increase overall vehicles, 8.6 inches. Gotcha. And that's part of high speed desert running stability. That track width that we have on F-150 Raptor, it's pretty much line on line with this truck. And it really provides that stability as you're going through the desert. And that's what's defining our width. Now, are these flares a regulatory factor as well? I mean, are there regulations where you have to cover the entire tire? Yeah, if you want to sell in all states, okay. um, there is a coverage requirement, and that's what we achieve with these flares. Is this a rock rail? What is going on down so here? So this, uh, this is another um, proud moment for the team. So we were like, gosh, we really want to have a rock rail, but we also want to have a running board. So this vehicle, is, it's got the ground clearance. It's also higher up. Um, F-Series Raptor has a very similar running board, but for this truck, maintaining that off-road capability that we were talking about at the onset, these running boards can be removed with these six screws and taken off, and then you have your, your rock rail fully exposed and ready to go. Oh, very interesting. And so we've included, we have a unique toolkit for this product, yeah. and uh, we provide the tool to take those off, and we actually have a hold feature um, where it it can be a one person job. So it's not just clanking down to the ground, you have a pin, uh, like, a, like a slot that it goes into. Yeah. And so that you can do it as a one person operation. Now, once you remove the steps here, yes. is this component rated to, to the, the weight of the vehicle? If you like oh, are yeah. really pushing it, that'll oh, yeah. the weight of the vehicle? Yeah, okay. that, that, is, uh, that is up to the task for sure, yes. Now, one of the cool things about this Bronco is we talked about in the presentation how all the vents are functional. Right, yeah. and it's, it's, it's very much a form leading style. So um, big part of this is getting air into the engine compartment, but these extractors on the hood, yeah. so getting the air into the engine compartment and then letting that air be able to flow out okay. so we can manage our heat better. So that is the main uh, area where heat is actually coming out based on the, the uh, air coming through the front grill. The, the fender vents here is more of a passive um, heat extraction. Okay. Most of the airflow is coming out of the top of the hood. So and, it, yeah. these are functional. The Absolutely. Vents, but most of the heat is out the top. Well, that's where your airflow through the grill is primarily coming from. Okay. This is still letting out a lot of heat, yeah. but it's more of a uh, passive function. Oh, I appreciate that. And yeah. where are the intercoolers located? Oh, so um, that's right behind the grill. So I don't think there's going to be a way that I can uh, accurately get into that, but I can tell you okay. that our, our charge air cooler, um, what we have on this product is we have a two high pressure inlets okay. in there. So it's about reducing losses through the intercooler or the charge air cooler. So we have two inlets and uh, one outlet. So oh, we're not cool. corking up the system. All part of really delivering on that induction loss um, um, that I talked about earlier. Super interesting. So, and it's also very important to note that sealing, as you get air through here, it's sealing it up so it's going in the right direction, namely the coolers, the radiator, to actually cool the vehicle. So is it a really big challenge? You've got you know a big vehicle with over 400 horsepower, but you gotta get that over 40 degree approach angle, uh, and, and you wanna have the modularity of the bumper. Is it a big challenge to design the front end in such a way where you can take stuff off and you know, winch from it and, and still be able oh, to? Oh, so we, um, <laughs> we actually borrow from the base program on the front modular bumper. Okay. Our end caps are different. You can see that we have two rigid lights um, as well as that would be a aero um, deflector on the okay. front that you yep. see there. So we're using some of the, uh, the componentry from the base program. Obviously some of the mating components are different the tow hooks are rated for this vehicle. Those are unique. The bash plate and all the shielding underneath the vehicle is also rated for this vehicle. Really? Yes. Are these, uh, are these fog lights or are these off-road lights? So we have fog lights. The fog lights are uh, controlled through the headlamp switch. Okay. And the capped ones, an, like another set of rigid lights, that's controlled from the overhead. So that's intended for off-road only. But of the switch pack that we have up by the uh, top of the the header mm -hmm. on the interior of the vehicle, yeah. you could switch those on. Now, speaking of the interior. And I, I might add that those fog lamps can be removed. So if you're rock crawling, yeah, yeah. this whole end cap comes off and those fog lamps can come off. So oh, they're really? not making contact. I love that, that's cool. That's hey. really cool. So when we look at the uh, roof structure or where the yeah. roof would be, um, 
I see a lot more bracing. Talk to me about that. So it's really all about getting back to the duty cycle of the truck. Um, so we wanted to increase the torsional rigidity of the body and prime. Body and prime. Okay. And with the Bebo, as we call it, that's an aluminum extrusion that goes behind the, the uh, first row seats, as you can see. And then the Sebo, which is in the rear of the vehicle, that's a, uh, has a nylon shell, glass-filled nylon shell with a carbon composite in it. We've managed to increase the torsional rigidity of the body and prime by 50%. Jeez. So that's really noticeable. You feel it in the steering. You feel it in the connectivity to the vehicle, to the road. And it all ties back to the frame as well. So in my mind, and this is, of course, me being totally wrong, but I think a lot of consumers think that just because you have a body on frame vehicle, the body structure doesn't add to any of the rigidity. But it sounds like these are crucial in actually the torsional rigidity of the it, vehicle. It's, it's important for what a customer is going to do with the Raptor. Okay. That, that is really what it does. Interesting. It, it helps for the Raptor driver. Very interesting. Yeah. Now, one of the crazy things about this vehicle, I mean, it's in person, you have to see one because it's just enormous. And we talked about some of the difficulties of actually getting this through production. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, as we went to 37 inch standard tires and delivering on our suspension travel, so we have 13 inches of suspension travel in the front of the vehicle, 14 in the rear. We got to the point of trying to get through the assembly plant, we were too tall. So we had some constraints in the plant and so we were figuring out, well, we're not gonna raise the roof of the plant, um, oh, what, what can we do? <laughs> what can we do? And so the team really came up with a cool um, solution to that issue so we could deliver the most amount of travel possible uh, for the customer. And that pertains to the rear axle and our shock perch. So we go through the system with the shock uh, perch and the axle in a different position. And then we go to our mod center where we drop the axle and get to the proper ride height. Yeah, it's, crazy. It, it's a great solution. Really proud of the team for that. Speaking of that axle, is this axle, we've come over here so we're in the sun again, is that axle specific to the Bronco Raptor? Yes, it is. Is it? Yeah, so the wall thickness is like double uh, the, the base Bronco. Sorry, double? Yeah, wall <laughs> thickness is doubled. Wow. Um, and you have a 235 ring gear in the back. It's a Dana 50 Advantech axle. Yeah. So um, very capable, we've tested it. And you'll see, you'll see basically what we put our vehicles through when you have the drive tomorrow. Okay. You're gonna see, but it's very capable axle. So we'll kind of come around here. We'll talk about a couple more things. Sure. So the rear, uh, the rear quarter. This is also that SMC material. That's correct. Okay. And yes. is this why, if you were to remove the flare, is this actually wider than a standard Bronco? Just the material? Does it Just stick to this further? point, um, I don't have the specifics on that. Okay. So, um, fair enough. Yeah, I'm not gonna speculate on that, okay. but. Now, was this designed to be easily replaced too? Is that one of the advantages of going yeah, it can be it, it can be removed with fasteners. Yeah, um, it's a slightly different fastener than the base Bronco, based on the fact that you'll see the high speed that we're going through tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So for the duty cycle of a Raptor, we've gone a little bit uh, in a different direction with fasteners. And before we finish up, I do want to kind of zip over to the frame here. There's a lot of blue and yellow. Can you yeah. explain what that means? Yeah, of course. So. Um, the base Bronco's frame is very capable. Um, we made some changes to the frame and you see those highlighted in blue on the vehicle. So whether it's uh, jounce bumpers or redundant jounce bumpers or the shock towers to really facilitate 13 inches of travel in the front, 14 in the rear. So those blue, the blue items are the changes we made to the frame. There's also some blue that, as Andy said, you not going to see because it's inside the frame as we reinforced it. <laughs> okay. So we test, we figure out, uh, um, obviously we do analytical work ahead of time, but as we uh, go through the process of developing the vehicle, we put further reinforcements in. But those are the primary, um, the, the uh, shock towers front and rear. And then you'll see our control arms moving on to the yellow bits. Those are, uh, it's a five link suspension. Yeah. We have the pan hard in the rear. Um, and the upper and lower control arms there, you can see that they're up to the uh, task of the travel that we're looking for. In the front, you can also see that we have a uh, larger control arm, upper and lower. Lower is cast, the upper is uh, forged. And within there, of course, you gotta talk about the Fox shocks. So we have the live valve technology 
uh, the Fox 3.1 shocks front and rear, um, where you have the um, piggyback reservoirs in the rear and integrated reservoirs in the front. Wow. These shocks are uh, up to the task, and it's um, really the same technology, but a different configuration than what you see on an F-150 Raptor. So talk to me about some of the um, design criteria when you're given the Raptor project. What does a Raptor have to do? It has to go fast in the desert. So we've got that Raptor DNA, that customer expectation of, hey, if it's a Raptor, I expect it to be able to go through the desert at very high speeds. Okay. And so we have a DNA associated with that. So typically you'll see that we have the track width, we have the, the suspension, we have the performance, um, as well as some other uh, features for the customer that enable them to be a better driver at speed. Now, what I think is interesting about the Bronco Raptor is if you look through the Ford material, not only is the intention to go across the desert, but there's also a lot of focus on rock crawling. Yeah. And I think in my mind, those are two very different things. So yeah. how do you start by engineering a vehicle that can do both? Yeah, so the, the, uh, the benefit that we had is that the base Bronco has that capability. So we were starting off with that capability of extreme rock crawling, and then we overlaid our Raptor DNA on top of it. So it's maintained like the low crawl ratio over rocks. It's maintained that. Uh, it also maintains a stay bar disconnect in the front, something that you'll want to have when you're going through the rock. So it's really building on the extreme capability of the base Bronco and really making this the highest of the Broncos. All right. So I think the big takeaway here, for me at least, is it's not just a standard Bronco with different wheels, tires, no. and wide body. <laughs> no, no. I mean, there's a lot under the There skin. is a lot. Now, this is kind of my softball question. What are you most proud of with the Bronco Raptor? So, it really, it, it, it always has to come back to, the, to these bits. It's about the suspension, the track with overcoming challenges with um, the constraint at the plant that we talked about, and uh, really thinking like our customer is going to to think when they're using our vehicle, whether it's touches inside the vehicle or the capability that's in here. Okay. Yeah, Very so cool. it's uh, it's an awesome product. It's been a career highlight for sure. Awesome, that's, that's so great. I'm so excited to drive it. Ari, thank you. Thank you. I really thank appreciate you. it. We will uh, be sure to let you know what it's like to drive, um, but I think this was a big eye-opening experience and you're great on camera. So All right. thank you for All that. All right, thank you, <laughs> thanks, thank you.